Okay. <laughs> well, I can't follow those two very easily, but uh, what I want to talk about is uh, do networks uh, facilitate collective action, something I've been working on a long time. We all know when individuals following their own interests lead to outcomes that nobody really likes, there's a collective action problem uh, that's involved there. Collective action uh, r reflects that conflict between individual and collective rationality that lies at the heart of political science and uh, concerns with governance. How can we build great cities and productive farms from dismal swamps or save dismal swamps from the cities that encroach? Thomas uh, Hobbes over three centuries ago thought that Co the coercive government power was the only way to do this. It took two centuries before John Stuart Mill suggested that enlightened self-interest may actually be a way of uh, substituting for this. And another century after that, before Ostrom and others has looked into uh, the kinds of, uh, of institutions that can uh, promote collective action that range from the Hobbesian uh, centralized uh, agencies on the right to the Mill type of uh, agencies on the left. And you can read it. Informal policy networks, I would argue, are perhaps one of the most important, at least studied of them, because of the support they provide for others. The basic idea is really simple. Uh, the uh, bonding relationships that you see on the left here are uh, essentially actors uh, like A, who uh, likes to have friends who, like, who know each other. B, on the other hand, uh, likes to have friends that don't. Bonding relationships are uh, on the left are the ones that, of course, I knew that were, were going to be the ones that uh, my research would show were true. They uh, provide uh, uh, trust and, uh, and uh, commitment. They are involved in, uh, in uh, many of the relationships and, and are good for looking at uh, problems of prisoner's dilemma, uh, public uh, uh, goods and, and uh, uh, common pool resource problems. The uh, bonding on, I'm going to have to stop this or I'll <laughs> <laughs> This is the pr you guys try this. <laughs> That's I could read it and I could stick to my timing, but that wouldn't be quite as interesting. Bridging relationships, on on the other hand, are, are good for information flows. So we'd expect they'd be good for kind of coordination problems, matching, battle of the sexes, and things like that. So I was all set in my research to find out about bonding relationships. So the first thing I was doing was field studies, uh, and I looked at uh, actors in, in ten different uh, 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 political arenas, but I found there that actually it wasn't bonding, it was bridging. That uh, the uh, most important thing in this case was people looked for actors who everyone else looked to so that they had central coordinators that came out of it. Uh, strike one against the, uh, the uh, clustering idea. And th in another uh, research in a similar setting, what I wanted to see was who collaborated in these things. But again, I found it was really degree and between a centrality that predicted collaboration. So it was so apparently collaboration is based more on informational needs than on commitment and the type of things that bonding relationships uh, would be uh, much better for. But of course, these studies are hard to really get at the data and they're inaccurate in a lot of ways. So I next moved to the agent-based modeling world where you can control everything. Here in this simulation, uh, people play two-person prisoners dilemma games with each other. There's a preset network that they learn about who does well and who doesn't do well, and uh, they select strategies that do well from that. Again, it wasn't bonding, it was bridging that was more important in dealing with this. In this case, it was the size of the sample, and in particular, how many people that you learned strategies from that in pre enhanced the amount of, of cooperation that one saw in this evolution of cooperation that, that came uh, from this process. Of course, agent-based modeling doesn't really get at uh, the human uh, motivations in that as well as other things, so we turned to experiments. The experiments uh, that we looked at was on uh, the voluntary dilemma where people play an iterated prisoner's dilemma, but they can decide to play or not to play and, and uh, pick different partners in that. So we had 14 subjects uh, in each uh, session. Subjects could choose who they wanted to play with uh, in each of these rounds. If both subjects wanted to play, they would play with each other. We're going to look at the evolution of cooperation in this case in the next uh, 20 rounds. The blue circles are the actors with the size of the circle telling how well they did in the end of the game. The red lines are cooperation decisions with the uh, partner. The black line is a defect uh, decision, and when there's no lines, there's uh, no game that's being played. So you can see as this game goes on that the red lines increasingly become clustered in the, in the uh, different clusters for each of the different uh, sessions. The black lines get kind of 
of pushed away into Nashville, as my partner uh, T.K. <laughs> uh, called it. Uh, so at last I had here, I thought, uh, a, a situation in which it was clus clustering produced cooperation. But no, when we looked a little further, we actually found the cooperators clustered. And that was the driving mechanism. There was no effect on cooperation. But the strategy that they used to do this was quit for tat. You'd you be nice to everyone until they defect, then you just quit and you don't play with them anymore. That turned out to be the most, the most important strategy. Uh, the, the players that played that did best. And it explained very clearly why you actually had these clusters. So again, uh, it, I didn't quite get what I was expecting to get out of this. Clustering really uh, hasn't shown up in my research. Now, I'm sure that it really is true that the, our basic beliefs about uh, social capital can't be wrong. It's just that I looked in the wrong places to find it. Uh, but if this is really going to be the century where we do actually make progress uh, in understanding collective action and networks, we really need to try a diversity of methods like this, only we need to find better areas where actually clustering does promote cooperation. <laughs>